Hey legends, welcome back to another one. So I've been promising this one for a while and I figured I better get around to it today. So today I'm gonna to do a walk around on my Toyota Land Cruiser Troop Carrier VGJ 78 series. So originally I'd been planning to buy new but I got such a good deal on this as a Toyota certified used vehicle that I had to jump on it. I've had this thing for about four years now and I've really tried to plan the mods smartly, um, not go over the top and make this a practical family touring vehicle that also suits my photography needs. I quite often get messages asking about this car and I find the main thing people are interested in is how I manage to fit kid seats in it. So I'm guessing a lot of the interest with this video is gonna be people wanting to see the inside of the car. So bear with me, I'll do a quick walk around to the outside and then we'll jump into the inside. So as you can see, I'm running an ALB Deluxe Bar. These are one of my favorite bars you can get for the 70 Series Land Cruisers. So it was kind of a no-brainer for me to jump onto this one. So onto the spotlights. Um, I'm just running your four-wheel drive super center. I think they're nine-inch driving lights. Um, these are one of the cheaper ones I could find. And I really didn't want to spend any extra money because I do really limited amount of night driving. Um, just occasional up the beach at night. Um, the few times I have had to use them, they perform really, really well. And honestly, bang for buck, couldn't be happier. So that about wraps up the front of the car. We'll move on to the side of the car now. So I think what I'll do for the side of the car is just start at the front and work my way back with this one. So continuing on with the ARB theme, I'm running the ARB Deluxe rails and side steps to go with the bull bar. So onto wheels and tyres, um, I'm running just your basic 16 inch steel rims. Um, for tyres, I'm running the Toyota Open Country All Terrain Mark II. For suspension, I'm running a two inch lift in an Ironman Foam Cell Pro GVM upgrade. I've been really happy with how this has been. Um, I definitely think that it improved the ride from stock. Um, they still ride pretty rough, these cars, but I find that it's really capable off-road, which is kind of what I bought it for. So this next one would be one of my absolute favorite mods I've done on the Troopy. It isn't for everyone, because you actually have to drill into the body of the car. But um, I absolutely love it, and it comes in super handy when we're away camping. This is the Max Trax recovery table holder from Expedition Center. We find this thing so quick and easy to use, and I love the fact that it has a dual purpose. Um, between this and the table in the rear, we actually stopped bringing any other tables with us on trips. So that's the side of the Troopy done. Let's move around to the rear now. So there's a bit going on in the back of this thing, guys. Um, I'll do my best to walk you through it all. If I miss anything, feel free to leave me a comment below and I'll get back to you with a bit more information. So with the rear of the vehicle, um, I'm running a setup from Drifter. Basically, um, we had Drifter custom build this setup and then we modded it to fit the fridge in ourselves. So first of all, I'm running the 85 litre fridge from Bushman. I'd always wanted to try an upright fridge in a vehicle and with the size of the Troopy, I was actually able to make this one happen. Um, overall, I've been super happy with it. I find it's way easier to pack stuff away on big trips and also heaps easier to access stuff without having to dig to the bottom. Hidden away beside the Bushman fridge there, I have an LD Expressy pod machine. Um, I probably added this about a year ago now, and this is one of my absolute favorite mods to the car. I love my coffee, and this just makes it so easy to have one early in the morning. Um, no more boiling water, no more getting the stove out. Literally turn the inverter on, chuck a pod in there, and it's ready to go. So in the drawer underneath the fridge, this is basically my gear drawer. Um, I'm running everything that I need for trips, for surfing, for basically everything is kept in that drawer there. I try to keep it as organized as possible using gear bags. The bottom left hand drawer, now this is my cooking drawer. Um, I try to keep everything that I need for any kind of cooking in this drawer, nice and organized together. So over here on the left hand side, we have an outlet for our ARB twin compressor, which is mounted down inside the wing. I store the hose in my gear drawer on the right hand side and the combination of these makes it super simple to pump up tires when needed. So this one's another personal favorite and it matches in really well with my Max Trax table around the other side of the car. Here we have the front runner table. The combination of these two tables together is an absolute game changer. Um, it means we don't actually have to take any other tables with us when we're away camping anymore and we can cook on one and food prep on the other. Very, very handy and um, yeah, I couldn't go without these things now. So that's the rear of the Troopy guys. Overall, um, I'm pretty happy with how these things come out. There's a couple little things I'll change if I was to start from scratch again and that's kind of to do with the layout of how I have the kids seats inside. 
Um, I'll touch on that one a little bit later about what I'd actually do differently if I started a game from scratch, but overall really happy with how it's come out and it's super functional as a family tourer. Let's move on to the roof now. To begin with, we have a Rhino Pioneer platform. Um, it's the three quarter length on the Troopy, which is about 2.1 meters long from memory. So mounted on top of the Rhino rack, we have a MoTop version four rooftop tent from MW Toolbox. So the main reason I chose this rooftop tent was due to the low profile. The tent can be set up very, very quickly. I reckon under a minute easily each way. I've taken out the average self-inflating mattress from inside and replaced it with a Zempire self-inflating mattress, which gives a super comfortable sleep. And on top of the tent, I've mounted a hardcore 170 watt solar panel. The main reasons I went with this one was it had some awesome reviews. At the time, um, MW Toolbox didn't have any of their solar panels in stock. I also like the super low profile of this panel. So mounted off the side, I have a Dash A 270 degree awning. This thing's pretty easy to set up and pack up. Can usually do it in under a couple minutes each way. Probably the biggest downside with this awning is it isn't 100% freestanding, which means you do need to put the legs down. At the time of purchase, there wasn't a lot of other options out there apart from the over $2,000 South African models. Um, if I had my time again now, I'd probably look at some of the other cheaper freestanding awnings that are out there. It definitely looks like there's a few good options out there for around $1,000. So mounted on the driver's side, we have the XTM shower awning from BCF. This was a pretty cheap option and I had a few gift vouchers for BCF. I'd always thought about grabbing a shower awning but wasn't sure if I'd use it enough. To be honest, we've probably only used it a couple times since having it, but on those few occasions, it's come in super handy. So heading around the driver's side of the Troopy, probably the first thing we'll come to is the gull wing. I purchased this gull wing from Drifter and it was a super easy installation process. The custom electrical panel was made by Luke at Oxquip in Brendale. Um, he was super amazing to deal with through the whole process and made something that I was super stoked with. The main part of the panel is the Red Arc Manager 30, which is also hooked up to 150 amp hour lithium battery from off-road living. So my other part of the 12 volt setup is a King's 1500 watt inverter. I just went with a cheap inverter for this one because I basically only use this to charge drone batteries and also run my Aldi Expressi pod machine. Next up behind the fridge, you'll see a little storage box that we made with the remaining space. Um, I use this basically as a grab and go area for backpacks and things like that. Um, and beside that, we've actually got a little space where I can store two front runner expanded chairs. So last up in this space, you'll see I have a shower hose. Um, this is just a marine hose that I purchased from one of those joints. I can't remember which one. Um, it was relatively inexpensive and works really, really well. This is plumbed into a Thorburn's 40 litre water tank, which is stored, as you can see, underneath the car here. I can actually access water from down the bottom here from our fill point and then also through the shower. So there's a bit going on with that gull wing there. Um, definitely one of my favorite areas that I planned out for the Troopy. Um, we might head up to the front of the car now because I can see myself forgetting about this one. So last up with the driver's side of the vehicle is a snorkel. Um, I was pretty quick to remove the mushroom top looking thing that comes standard on these things and replace it with the Safari Armax snorkel. Now for the bit everyone's probably been waiting for, the inside of the Troopy. So one of the first things I did when I purchased this car was to fully strip it out and install Car Builder's sound editing. Um, I basically installed the full kit of that, which includes like on the roof lining, all up the internal parts of the car and also the floor mats. Um, it made a massive difference at the time. I don't notice it so much anymore because I'm so used to it, but it still sounds pretty loud now. So I can only imagine how loud it'd be if I never did that at the time. So one of the first things you might notice when um, entering this car is the iDrive unit. So I installed that a few years ago and it's definitely one of the better bang for buck mods that I've done to this thing. Um, I replaced the stock Toyota head unit with a Pioneer unit that has Apple CarPlay. So one of the more recent things I've added to the interior of the car is one of these eBay um, MagSafe phone holders. Actually super happy with how well this works. Um, if you've got a MagSafe iPhone, highly recommended grabbing one of these things. So here you can see some armrest slash cup holders. Um, these are just the cheaper eBay ones and I've probably had them on for about six months now. Super happy with how well these work and um, yeah, I don't think I could go without them now. So here we have it, probably the ones a lot of people were waiting to see. Um, 
we have two single seats from TechSafe seating. Um, they were quite expensive from memory, um, definitely looking at a few thousand dollars, but this included all the engineering and all that kind of sign off. Um, the seats also feature built-in anchor points, so we didn't have to get any kind of other installation to be able to fit the child seats. We can slide the seats forward for the kids to get into the back that way, but um, we found with the age the kids are at now, they like just climbing into the car and then into the back seat themselves. Um, I'm tall enough that I can actually do up the seat belt from the outside windows there, which makes it pretty simple. So that wraps up the inside. Hopefully I didn't actually miss anything there, and I reckon we're getting pretty close to concluding this walk around now. So I've pretty much done most of the things I want to do to this vehicle. Um, Maybe in the near future, I'll look to add a tow bar and possibly a winch and a radio. But so far, I'm pretty happy with how everything's sitting and definitely in no hurry to change things. Looking back now, I reckon the only thing I would change to this fit out is the possibility of having the two rear seats together. That would actually allow me a space down one side where I could run things like longer surfboards without having to put them on the roof or strap them to the inside of the roof. Um, it's not a massive deal now, but I think probably my recommendation if someone was to do something similar from the start is possibly to look at doing something like that. So the Troopy's been getting a solid workout the previous six months and we managed to do a bunch of trips away. Um, I managed to film a bunch of these trips and if you haven't checked them out, I'll chuck the links after the video. Feel free to follow along for our future adventures and I'll see you in the next one, legends.